Harvard's Cove Reservoir and Water Treatment Facility are important cornerstones of Roanoke's water resources. Join me as we explore the Carbons Cove water treatment process. The process starts at Carvins Cove Reservoir, the Roanoke region's largest water source, which holds up to six and a half billion gallons of water. It is up to 80 feet deep and collects water from its surrounding 11,200 acre watershed. This protected watershed is the second largest municipal park in the United States with recreational amenities including hiking, mountain biking, horseback riding, fishing, and boating. The bowl shape of Carvins Cove Natural Reserve directs rainwater downhill towards the reservoir. When rain falls on the tree canopy, the leaves and branches slow the water's movement so that it falls to the forest floor at a gentler rate. Leaf litter collected on the forest floor further slows stormwater's speed. Roots help to hold the soil in place, further reducing erosion and offering protection for this water resource. This human-built reservoir exists thanks to an 80-foot dam that was constructed to hold the water in this mountain valley. The dam was completed in 1928, but the reservoir was not filled until 1946, after the Great Depression, a drought, and World War II had concluded. In order to ensure more secure water supplies, two tunnels were later constructed to bring water in from neighboring creeks. The Tinker Creek Tunnel was completed in 1966, and the Catawba Creek Tunnel was completed in 1974. The Water Authority can opt to close the tunnel gates in order to keep creek flows above appropriate minimal levels, and also allow some control over how much water flows into the reservoir. This water source has provided water to the region since the completion of the Carvins Cove Water Treatment Facility in 1947. Let's explore the treatment process that takes this protected water and treats it for human consumption. At the reservoir, before water travels to the treatment plant, a diffuser that is located 30 feet below the surface adds oxygen into the water. This added oxygen will help to improve the taste and smell of the water, reduce organic compounds, and reduce phosphorus. As the raw, untreated water enters one of two 36-inch diameter pipes, it passes through screens that will keep any larger items such as sticks, leaves, and fish out of the treatment process. Before the raw water continues to the treatment plant, sodium permanganate is added which further oxidizes the water. This addition will help to reduce any taste and odor, control biological growth, and reduce manganese as well as other contaminants carried in the water. The Carvins Cove Water Treatment Facility was first constructed in 1945. In order to continue to provide reliable water security, it was expanded in 1955 and again in 1995. These expansions were in anticipation of a continuously growing population and also with an eye to plenty of capacity to support incoming business and industry. In addition, the plant has extra capacity so that repairs and cleaning can be conducted without disrupting water treatment. The Western Virginia Water Authority typically treats about 19 million gallons of fresh, clean drinking water for our customers each day. Our Carvins Cove facility provides about 7 million gallons of that water every day, and this plant has the capacity to produce up to 24 million gallons a day. Upon arrival at this treatment facility, water is aerated to remove naturally occurring dissolved gases and to oxidize dissolved metals. This makes the water taste and smell better. To accomplish this, water is forced up into the air and resembles a series of pond fountains. This mixes air into the water and we have aeration. After aeration, flash mixers ensure uniform distribution of sodium hypochlorite and ferric sulfate. Sodium hypochlorite is chlorine, which will kill bacteria. Ferric sulfate is key in the next step of the treatment process, flocculation. Considering how clean the water appears during the aeration step, this step in the treatment process may look surprising. Its appearance is only due to the addition of ferric sulfate, which causes the sediment to clump together. While it was difficult to see the sediment in the previous aeration step, now that it has pulled together, it has become more visible. These larger clumps of sediment are called flock. 
The water takes 60 to 90 minutes to travel the length of these 11 foot deep basins, while paddles are slowly turning under the water to continue to incorporate the ferric sulfate, encouraging further flock formation. After flocculation, water enters the settling basins, where the now heavy flock sinks to the bottom. The basins are 11 feet deep and water spends about three hours in the settling basins depending on the rate of flow through the treatment plant. Eventually, all of that settled flock builds up, and that flock is the consistency of cereal that sat in milk too long. If this basin fills with flock, then it will no longer be able to operate properly. Consequently, once a year, these basins are emptied and cleaned. Remember that the plant has extra capacity, so a basin can be taken out of commission for cleaning. To clean the basins, a drain is opened and all of the water and most of the flock drains out. Then water operators work together as a team to hose down the basins and clean the remaining flock from the bottoms of the basins. The water slowly moves across the top of the settling basin until it reaches the end of that basin. Next, it will quickly pass through weirs. A weir acts like a strainer or a sieve. The water is forced up between the rows of weirs and then flows over the top. Any remaining large pieces of flock will catch in those teeth. It's okay if any leaves, debris, or even birds land in these open basins, as the final steps of filtering and disinfection will take place inside the treatment facility. The process thus far has removed larger sediment that is visible to the naked eye, but smaller sediment, parasites, and bacteria remain. Filtration and disinfection are required to remove these contaminants. Inside the filter gallery, water passes to one of six filter basins. Before the water enters the filter from the top, sodium hypochlorite is added again. The water will then flow down through the filter media. At this plant, the filter media is composed of 23 inches of anthracite coal over top of 14 inches of silica sand. The water slowly passes down through this media, and small pieces of sediment and even parasites get caught on all of those sharp edges. Filter media in a conventional plant like this is modeled after the Earth's sediment layers that scientists have found effectively filters groundwater. Eventually, all of that sediment will build up in the filters, so the filters do require backwashing, which is a process where air and water are forced up into the filter media to stir up the sediment and rinse out the filters. The Water Authority follows guidance provided by the Virginia Department of Health to determine backwash frequency. Water operators also monitor the filters and act as required. Backwash typically occurs every 70 to 80 hours. After the water has been filtered, one part per million of sodium hypochlorite, also known as chlorine, is added per Virginia Department of Health regulations. The water is stored in an underground finished water reservoir before going out into the distribution system to allow time for the chlorine to effectively kill any bacteria. It is difficult to smell or taste this chlorine in your water because the amount of chlorine is so low. However, it is enough to ensure that there is no bacteria in the water that could make us sick. In order to protect against tooth decay, fluoride is also added to the finished water according to the VDH recommendation of 0.7 parts per million. To provide protection for customers from any lead in in-home plumbing, orthophosphate corrosion control is added and will coat the water pipe walls to prevent the leaching of lead or other metals into the water supply. At the conclusion of this four-hour treatment process, Roanoke's drinking water is now filtered, purified, and ready for use. Consistently available and safe water is possible thanks to water operators at the Western Virginia Water Authority. These dedicated professionals ensure quality water every single day of the year. So the next time you take that refreshing drink of water, shower, wash the dishes, or water your plants, imagine the journey that this water has taken and the professionals responsible for making this happen. And that concludes your drinking water's journey from the natural world through our filtration and purification system. We hope you enjoyed learning all about one of Roanoke's drinking water treatment systems. Visit us in all of our online locations to learn more.